Well, hello everybody. My name is Phil, and thank you for tuning in to this tutorial on how to use trends in RS Logix 5000. I hope you find it useful, and so let's jump right in. Now, if you've got any familiarity with PLCs, uh, you probably have come across a situation where a trend might have been very useful. If you're doing any kind of troubleshooting, if you're coming into a situation where you're developing some code, or if you're having to work with someone else's code, and you are trying to figure out what's going wrong, it can often be the case that things are happening in the code that are too fast for you to see. It's a bit like watching a skilled magician. You know they're doing something with their hands, but you're not sure what. And similarly, some problems when you're dealing with PLCs, you know something's going wrong, uh, but you can't quite see what exactly is happening. And in these kinds of situations, one of the best tools in your arsenal is the trend feature. Now, many different manufacturers will have their own versions of this, uh, but today we're gonna look at RS Logix 5000 or Studio 5000 and look at their trend feature. So let's start with the real basics and then we'll go on to some examples. So once you're online with a controller and you do need to be online, um, it will not work to try and trend a value from an offline controller. And the reason for that is quite simple. It's just the nature of a trend. Uh, and, and that is, the, a trend is, is a graph. You are tracking the status or value of a tag across time. And you can do that for a very simple, you know, uh, on or off tag. Or you can have very complex trends where you have multiple tags uh, using multiple different scales and uh, you are uh, noting tiny changes that are happening uh, in uh, only a few milliseconds. So let's take a look at how you uh, set up a trend. And there's two basic ways to do this. The first is to simply select a, a tag and right click it like so and uh, click Trend. It's here one of the options that uh, opens up. So if we click this, basically it starts a trend for you and selects your tag. It has some default settings that it adopts. And then all you have to do to start trending this value is to press Run. Now, as you can see, uh, this is a tooth counting sensor. And so we're working with a palletizer machine here. And one of the motion axes on this machine is a continuous pusher. And this machine is a little older and has a rudimentary sort of encoder-like system for uh, the motion feedback. And it has a little proximity sensor that's counting the teeth of the sprocket as the sprocket turns. So if we look at this here, uh, right now, you can see the seconds are going by in the bottom. And your line is very straight. Now, RS Logix 5000 will set a default Y axis scale here, and it will basically scale this in accordance to the range of the values of your tag as the trend goes on. Personally, I don't find this very helpful because if you look at these numbers, well, they're extremely tiny. It's hard to know really what they mean. Since I know I'm trending right now, a boolean tag, it's only going to go from 0 to 1. What I like to do is change the y-axis scale. A couple of ways to do this. You can double click on the y-axis here, like so, and then you get the properties tab for just the y-axis, or you could right click on the trend window and click chart properties. This opens up all the properties for your chart, including the y-axis. And so I like to give myself a custom range here. I like to go from minus one because I don't like zero being right at the bottom. It's just a little idiosyncrasy of mine. And let's say I gave myself four. Now I've got my value here at zero. By default, there's four grid lines. So here each grid line is a number. And to me, that's pleasing. I like this. And so we can take a look at what happens. Now I'm going to make this axis turn and we're going to see what happens to the signal. So Let's go ahead and do that. And we're going to index the continuous pusher. And right away, we can see on our trend that our sensor is picking up all kinds of tooth counts. 
but all of a sudden it's gone. We can't see it anymore. And this highlights the x-axis scale. Right now, by default, it only gives you a time span of two seconds. So you can see that I double clicked on the x-axis. It works the same way as the y-axis. You see a highlight here, and when you double click, it opens up your x-axis properties, or in the same way as I did before, you can right click, hit chart properties, and we can go and edit our x-axis. So let's say two seconds, it's pretty hard to see anything happen over just two seconds. So I like to give myself a little bit more time. Let's give ourselves 40 seconds. Apply that. Now suddenly you can see the value here coming across. And so let's try that again and see what it looks like. If we index a continuous pusher, now we're gonna see our tooth counter is picking up all these transitions. And now it looks a little bit dense and we can't see the details. So what you can do is you can press pause here at any time, and then you can zoom in to the area that you wanna see. And that's simply a click and drag feature. You can zoom in some other ways, but I don't see why you would. Uh, in this way, you can just select what you wanna see, and then it'll just zoom in to that, and you can see what, what you wanna see. So this is great. And if you want to start trending for a new event, you simply press the pause here, or unpause, and you start to scroll again. Now, if you notice, I'm still at value zero, but now I'm not quite on my line. That's because I'm still zoomed in. And so you're gonna wanna right click and just undo that zoom in order to get back to the scaling and the view that you had at first. Now, before we get too much farther, I did say that there was two main ways to start a trend. So we've done the first way, and then we've looked at some very basic functions of the trend. The second way is simply on the left side here of the controller organizer window. You can right click on trends, which is a folder that's gonna be uh, in your list here, and you can start a new trend. When you do that, it's um, ask you for a name. So let's call it test trend. We're gonna have a sample period of 10 milliseconds. I believe 10 is the minimum. And so let's go to next. And uh, then they want you to select tags. So here we see that there's a whole bunch of tags. I'm in a controller with many tags. So I'm going to basically just click a random one and you can select more than one. And let's say we do those two and we click finish. Now we're where we started when we had right clicked and clicked uh, create a trend for that value. So again, if you wanna run this, you gotta click run and then here we go. Now, since this is a new trend, the scaling that I had done for the old one no longer applies. So as you can see here, my Y axis is back to this and my X axis is back to a two second limit. So I'm gonna stop this one and close it. And, and we'll keep working with the one that we had started earlier. Okay, so let's take a look at what else we can do with trends. Okay, let's say that you need to trend more than one tag. And so what you're gonna do is add some more tags to be trended. You can do that a couple of different ways. You can click here where you see your one pen or your one tag listed. If you double click on that, you'll open up the pens tab of the properties. The other way to do it is to right click and hit chart properties. And then one of the tabs there will be the pens. Here in this tab, you can see the different tags that you've selected. You can change their color uh, to whatever you like. And you can also set uh, some other settings. The most important one that I typically use would be to have minimum and maximum values. And th what this does is basically for each tag, you can tell it what the scale is for the y-axis that you would like. And the reason this can be really helpful is if, let's say, you have some Boolean tags, like the one that we were just looking at, but you also have some tags that will go much higher. Perhaps you have an encoder value that's gonna go into the thousands, or you have a counter or a timer or something like that. 
And you know that those values uh, are going to go much higher. And the fact is, if you scale it for your highest value, let's say one to a thousand, well, it's almost impossible to see the movement from zero to one. So what you can do is give them individual minimum, maximum values. And this way you can get a chart where all your information is there and it's intuitive and you can see exactly what's going on with all your signals. So I'm going to add a couple of tags here and it's going to be related to this continuous pusher. And then we'll run our cycle again and we'll take a look at what the trend does. Okay, so I've added the PALB continuous pusher stop point. That's a sensor that tells the machine when the continuous pusher is back home. And we've added the tooth counter accumulation tag. So that's gonna tell us how many sprocket teeth the machine has counted for that cycle. So if we click OK on this, we're gonna see here. Now I happen to know that my tooth counter does not reach 100 on a full cycle. So I'm going to put minus 1 to 4 on my two Boolean tags and leave the tooth counter between 0 and 100. So I'm going to hit Apply. And when that happens, um, you can see that um, my pens have appeared. They've got colors. And however, you see my y and my minimum and maximum values uh, all seem to be minus one to four. The reason for that is that in y-axis, if you want to use minimum maximum settings from the pens tab, you need to click preset. And that will, instead of using this custom y-axis, you're gonna use the preset values that you configured in your pens tab. So that's great. Click yes on that. Um, <clears throat> let's see what else, if we need to change anything. There's lots of options here. I encourage you to take a look at and get familiar with all the different options uh, that the, it's really quite powerful. Um, once you get into what this thing can do, you've got even start triggers and stop triggers if you want to capture a certain event and you know that uh, it's only gonna happen once in a while and you know that a certain something is gonna happen, let's say to a tag value when when the event happens you can even configure that now that's outside the scope of this tutorial but just to give you an idea that uh, this is quite a powerful tool now you notice here i've clicked display milliseconds if you're looking at really precise and um, events that are happening within just a few milliseconds this will help you because by clicking it let's say i come back here now and when you have hit pause and you're analyzing your event whenever you click somewhere on the trend, it'll give you the value of the tags being trended. So at the point when this was paused, I only had one tag, so it gives me one value, zero. And then it tells me the exact time that that value was recorded, down to the milliseconds. And this, that's why I clicked milliseconds, because I've got all that information there. And you know, if I zoom in a lot, and then I go, basically, I can get it down where I'm clicking every 10 milliseconds, I get a value reading. And that's where that 10 millisecond sample time came from uh, when we first set up this trend. All right, so let's undo zoom, let's unpause. And now we're gonna have, you'll see that my minimum max, my min and max values are set up. And I don't see anything happening here. And that's because I haven't clicked run again. When you add new pens to your trend, uh, it stops the trend and you have to hit run in order to start trending values again. So here we go. We've got one value, uh, one tag that is at value zero, and that would be the tooth counter, the, the tooth sensor. And we've got one tag that's at value one, that's the stop point. That makes sense because my continuous pusher is back home and my tooth counter is at zero. Great. So we're ready for another cycle. I'm going to go ahead and index that one more time. And when I do that, we're going to see a whole lot of things happen here. All right. So that there is basically the event cycle. And what I'm going to do is just press pause on there. And then we can zoom in and take a closer look at what happened. So if we go, let's say, select all this, it's going to spread that across the full screen. And what's really nice about that is you can really get into the details and see. So let's take a look here. If I click here, we can see this is before the event really started. 
right here is the first indication that something has happened because I got my first tooth count. And a, a few milliseconds later, about 100 milliseconds later, my sensor, my stop point sensor, goes from one to zero. So that means that my pusher bar has moved um, enough that I've lost the home signal. And you can see that as soon as I got that one tooth count, or maybe actually it's from the second one, we start to have my counter counting up tooth counts. And so this is the counter value climbing up like a big staircase all the way to the top. When it gets near the end, there's some logic in there that is telling it to decelerate because it knows it's getting near the end. And as soon as we detect that stop point uh, sensor again, we want to stop right there. And that's what happens. So you can see here, but by the way, when you click anywhere on your trend and you're analyzing your results, uh, the vertical numbers here are going to just match the vertical list of your tags. So, you know, if I click here, let's say both my values were at zero at that moment and my tooth counter was at 69, 70, 74, and so on and so forth. Okay, so that gives you an idea of how you can set up a trend and use it and really analyze an event in the system of the machinery that you are working with. And I can't tell you how many times this thing has saved me so much time and has really helped me to pinpoint the root cause or at least point me in the right direction uh, towards the root cause by analyzing an event like this and finding what the issue was. Now, there's a lot more that you can do with trends. This is only kind of a, a basic start, but I think that's going to be it for today. I think it gives you a good starting point, and um, this is a powerful tool. So that concludes our time together. Thank you so much for tuning in, and I hope it was helpful. And I encourage you to like and subscribe and leave a comment below and let us know how you have used trends to uh, solve problems in your own work in the PLC world. All right, guys, until next time, take care and uh, hang in there.